Detroit is the greatest! Straight up light you on fire for a Coney dog right now. Motor City Sports Rant, DetroitSportsPodcast.com. I'm Benny Stubbs. Sitting across from me is John Macaroon. Jason Jarvey's not in today. I, I don't understand. He doesn't like you. What a talent. Uh, sitting across from me now is uh, my personal buddy, uh, Jim Cook. <laughs> Jim. J Boogie. Ladies and gentlemen, the Lions did it again. <sighs> John, a professional football team is 4-9 uh, again. Uh, they quit. A professional football team quits. They quit. A professional football team just flat out doesn't come to play. They Aaron Rodgers throws a Hail Mary. Oh, okay, it's over. Don't show up next Sunday to play the Rams. You lost to Case Keenum in the St. Louis Rams. Shame. Shame on this city. I'm still in shock. Today. A shock? I was shocked they played that bad. I was shock? Shocked. I was shocked. Shock? I was shocked they played that bad. I thought they would lose 27-24. I thought they'd play better. You thought they would lose to Case Keenum and the St. Louis Rams? Yeah. I, I thought they would win that game. They really? got stellar defense. No, I thought that, I thought that what, they, they would you lose. What did you think? I thought they would, they would lose because Aaron Donald was going to— I knew that Aaron Donald was going to crap all over the Lions. I, I felt like that going into that game, that Hail Mary just ruined the season, and it was a tough, it was a tough way to lose, and I didn't think it was something they would recover even in 10 days. And it's the Lions. At this point in time, you know that they're— up and down. It's hard to predict what they're going to do. And <laughs> no, it's really it's tough to watch. It's tough. It's tough. Sometimes they, 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 play, they do play well, but it's tough to, um, to, to really judge with this Lions team. You know they're not going to play as good as most other teams, and it's just one of those things where I watched it half-heartedly, and when all this bad stuff was happening, each Donald sack was kind of like, oh, man, really? This is what's going to happen? It was a boring-ass first half. Oh. I, I was like, man, if it wasn't for these podcasts that we do, and I'm like a diehard, I was like, you know what? I must be crazy to sit and watch this nonsense. It's bullshit. And then I was texting Adam. I'm like, really? It's not fair that in Detroit there was no other option unless you had direct TV. That was the only game you could watch, and I thought that was total BS. I got a website that you can uh, oh. watch games on. Lions are 1-5 and five on the road and 3-4 and four at home. They're 4-9. and that, that text that Jarvey sent uh, yesterday was really offensive. He said, uh, th- this game right here solidifies Caldwell's firing. Uh, oh, 0-5 oh didn't? I, yeah, you made a good point. What do you mean I made a good point? Yeah. That was an excellent point. It was an excellent point. And what Jarvie point. sent was criminal. I was offended to the high heavens. Why were you offended? Because they went 0-5, and, and he said that this game solidified. How about the Hail Mary pass? How about my life as a Lions fan? I, dude, listen. I watched, the, I watched highlights of the playoff game last year when they lost to Dallas, and besides the fact that Riley Reeves still trash, uh, the Lions now, there's no sense of urgency. Um, and another thing. The Lions, the running game yesterday, Bell, 7 for 50, Abdullah, 7 for 23, Riddick, 3 for 18. They ran the ball effective for the first time in God knows how long. If they're finally running the ball effectively, why did they get away from it? Why did Stafford throw the ball 46 times? It doesn't make any sense. And I see my buddy's not going to have any kind of input whatsoever, so (laughs) I'm kind of out here by myself. That was atrocious. You're finally running the ball, and you get away from it. You throw the ball 46 times, Stafford... They're not going to get rid of him. They should have traded Calvin Johnson at the uh, before the deadline at the beginning of the year, T- dude. This I I I'd rather watch the real on Fox. You ever you're, and you and Calvin exactly. only caught one ball. That's it. They targeted T.J. Jones more than Calvin Johnson. The guy's six foot five. They got away from it. More screen passes. Garbage. 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 They just use him for blocking on screen passes. What a hell of a blocker he is. A hundred million dollars. <laughs> And then the interception was a, oh. lot, a lot of people. When you look oh, at the, the film, I do. it was oh my God. It was Calvin's fault. Mm. You're not supposed to let the guy uh, get in front of you uh, on a on a slant route. You're supposed to box the guy out mm. and really make a, a a deep cut. And so everyone that looks at it on film says that hey, Calvin is responsible. That is not really on Stafford. That pick, oh that pick God. six, that that's on Calvin. I can't believe it. And we're it's still unacceptable, talking, right? We're still talking about the same mistakes that they were making six years ago. Mm-hmm. Well, they bottled up. Uh... 
Todd Gurley for like seven rushes for 13 yards the first half. Oh. The second half, he exploded. Wow. They're a really good first half team. They scored Not zero it. points in the first half. St. Louis, 203 yards rushing. Wow. On a professional football team that went 11 and 5 last year. What? As you guys were watching it, did you guys care? Like for me, I was Absolutely watching it. Not. Not I listened ever. to Dan Miller. I didn't even right. watch it. See, exactly. I was watching it half heartedly, and I'm like, wow, you know, we're early in December, and there's three games left, and I think they've just put them a laze, and it's just like, why? You know, they've, they've killed the passion for football if you're a Lions fan. It's just tough to watch. And if you're not a diehard, I don't know why people are still watching. Well, it's gotta, Caldwell. I, I, Caldwell's, he's. <laughs> you just told me last night they're going to keep him. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. I and... didn't even talk to you last night. What? Shut the. Shut up. <laughs> you told me yesterday they're going to keep Caldwell. Go, no, what? they're not. I said Cooter. No. <laughs> my god no, C- Caldwell never shows any passion just composure that's it everything's a professional <sighs> he's garbage he's garbage he should be cut send him on, send him on his way he needs to be fired and keep so does- Tyrell Austin no you yeah. fire you broom everybody out and, and they they better take their sweet ass time finding themselves a new GM because doom and gloom is all I see it's incredible a professional athletes giving up like that I, I I want a GM that's experienced with a winning resume. I have a feeling that the res the, the the resume the GM that they bring in is he'll he'll be he he'll he'll be a, been out of football for ten years. I guarantee it. Even if he has a winning record as a GM, Are you, would, even if he would, has experience, I wouldn't mind Xanders. We hired Xanders a few years back as uh, player personnel. He did pretty good for uh, the Broncos at first, and then they brought in uh, Xanders. I'm and starting to think they started it's, drafting well. It's the front office and the scouting department. Because Xanders, everybody that he drafted in Denver, what was it, the, the first 21 guys were starting the year after? He drafted Von Miller. Well, not that that was a, a hard <laughs> He's pick. He's been in Detroit for, what, three years? Mm-hmm. They're yep. still not developing, they're not developing these players into professional athletes. Adam loves him, so he likes that name. He'll like you. That's Xanders. definitely, Brian, he loves yeah. Brian Xanders. He's like, he, should, he, he thought that Xanders should have been the guy <laughs> that, instead of Sheldon White. Who the hell's Sheldon White? You know, I don't know who the hell that is. He's <laughs> the interim GM. He ain't going to stay. They might actually promote him to be GM for the rest of his life. No. Wait, how how mad were you guys seeing? I wasn't Donald? mad at all because I already knew it was coming. Okay, you thought same thing like Donald was just gonna come in and crap. I knew that because you know you could tell that he used that game as a game to say like you know what you guys Skip passed me. on me, you passed on me, you picked Ebron tenth and let me drop the thirteenth. He came in there and all Stafford right. was hurried nonstop like at least twenty two times, and all all of a sudden all you all you kept hearing was Donald here, Donald in the backfield, Donald and Fairley uh, sack again by Aaron Donald. And you're like. This is this would happen to Lions fans seeing the guy that we should have had on our team. We should have had Aaron Donald be the the replacement for Indomitian Sue. Right, and it didn't happen. Of course, why? Not. Why didn't happen? And of course, he comes in and craps all over the Lions. Craps he, that made me mad. You shit. What do well, you think? I, 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 I no. don't know what to say. I think they're all <laughs> what? Go, go ahead. I, I think they're enough. Ebron to was a bad pick, but I think if you think back, I think drafting another defensive tackle in the first round still would have been a bad choice. Yeah, Donald. I mean, obviously, looking back from now, mm-hmm. yeah, they should have. But you had intentions on keeping Sue. You were going to probably keep Fairly, maybe not. Drafting Karan Reed even later in that in that draft. I mean, he was a solid pick. He was just undersized. I still think he he may be good, just a development player. But with coaching, you just you need the coaching. Who Reed? Yeah, I like Karan Reed. They can't develop college athletes and develop them in, in a professional athlete. No, you make a good point. No, he doesn't. No, he makes a great point. But the point is, though, a lot of people. Didn't want Donald. A lot of people were like, okay, not Ebron, no. uh, Odell Beckham. You want to give Stafford more toys? You're you're in a win-now mode? You want to give know. him more of an, uh, more offensive weapons? Fine. You still could have drafted Odell Beckham, not Aaron Donald. But you got Ebron, who's not doing nothing. Three catches for 20 yards, and he comes out and is a talker. I can't sit with that. That's the stuff. The game didn't make me angry. The stuff surrounded it made me really angry. Oh, yeah. You're, you're preaching to the choir. Well, Ebron, Ebron, even the pick looking back then. Ebron, we had Joseph Fourier, who was supposed to be the next Jimmy Graham. Do you know he gave herpes to three girls in the Metro Detroit area, and they're suing him? Where'd you get that? No. <laughs> I heard it on the riff. I couldn't believe it. I go, really? Wow. Now he's in Arizona. I think they cut him. Did they? Oh, no! Yeah, you can't be herpes. herpes is a big no-no. You can't be doing that. <laughs> no, you cannot. I mean, you can, but you can play for the Arizona Cardinals as well. Did you and Adam ever go and see him at the bar? Who? Joseph Fourier. He was out there quite a bit. We're on the east side? Yeah. I live on the west side. Even on the West Side, I think he was everywhere. He was a guy who was a man about town. Really? Yeah. Well, that's cool. Wow. You didn't see him anywhere in your extravagant evening lifestyle? No. Mm-hmm. It's coming to an end. <laughs> Why? I, it's just relentless. And, and Aaron's going to Go st- stop busting my balls. A- Aaron is just relentless on me. I don't even have time to study for the podcast anymore. Just 
She's relentless a ball bossing. Lad. It's ball bossing at level red. And uh, <laughs> boy, I, I don't know how much so, more I can take. It's like, <laughs> so you're saying that uh, Ebron being on the team uh, at the time when he was drafted two years ago, not that big a deal? Or it was not... a terrible decision. I everybody I anybody would... with a brain knew that was a bad pick. You don't draft I a didn't tight end 10th overall. Out of the SEC. No, you signed you signed Pettigrew. ACC, whatever the you signed Pettigrew. Called. You had Fourier. You had no uh, choice. Uh, what? No, you had you didn't have you didn't have to draft him. You could have drafted a receiver like Odell Beckham. No. Did we plan on Odell Beckham doing Odell anything? Odell Beckham wouldn't have been shit here. I know. He made that one handed grab and everyone's going crazy. He's about pretty him. Damn Yeah, good. he's he's really good. He's the new Chad Ocho Singo. <laughs> but <laughs> there's no channel. <laughs> Are you ready to call Ebron a bust? Yeah, he busted two years ago. It's no, you know he's had a better year this year than uh, in other games. When Stafford's moving the ball around, he looks somewhat effective. But, <laughs> but when Stafford is lag, and when you're playing against a good defensive line, that all that offensive line, I mean, they pressure Stafford. He's got a second and a half to get rid of the ball, and a lot of the players around him. You know when they're playing against a good defensive line. The screen passes are relentless, and they do not stop. When they're playing against a subpar to below average defensive line, the offensive line does its job, and Stafford has time to move the ball around. Jim Bob Cooter looked just like Lombardi yesterday. Am I wrong? Of course not. Well, St. Louis is a bad team, but they had a solid defense. Yeah. Uh, Fisher is a, a solid defensive coach, and all year long, mm. anytime the Lions played anybody with a defense, they struggled. So that's just what it was. That's what I just said. Yeah, that's what it was. The offensive line is absolutely atrocious. A that's, Warford, Thomas, like and Reef. I mean, a, it, the list goes on and on. When are they going to get it together? This isn't funny. Next year? I'm not even distraught. I, it's, I'm just I'm done. I'm done. And next year, what are they going to do? They're still stuck with these players. I mean, for shit's sake, get it together. They're stuck with these offensive linemen for the next five years. They're talented all the way around. They are? Yeah. Four it's, nine. Coach, it's coaching. You. It's not coach. It's, it's everything. It's scouting. It's coaching. It's the front office. You have the it's talent. It's the GM. It's the president. It's the owner. It's everything. Top to bottom, total trash. They went 11 and 5 last year. They're 4 and 9 already. I mean, damn it. I Obviously said they were going to go 7 and 9 and They made eight. the playoffs. Huh? They made the playoffs last year. Obviously, they have the Started talent. Started off 0 and 5. That's coaching. Look at all the boneheaded calls. The Stafford's is- lionized, right? He's got two more years on his contract. No. You can't let him go. He sells tickets. They're not going to get rid of him. You can't let him go. You can't replace him anyway. You can't let him go. John, are you going to talk or am I going to hang myself in the bathroom? No, no. I'm, I'm, fascinated. <laughs> I'm fascinated by your question. You ain't fascinated by anything. I want an answer. Is Stafford lionized? No, I think that he he's doing his part. He ain't killing the team. He ain't helping the team. You're going to need to roll with him. I don't see any... Leadership roles, nothing. He doesn't get mad. Nothing. I don't see anything out of this asshole. Nothing. I mean, do something. But people who say that they want to get rid of Stafford, they say, okay, who's going to be next? It's I mean, ignorant. Yeah, it's I, ignorant. Yes, it's ignorant. Let me don't tell let you go. why that's not ignorant, my friend. <laughs> you can't let Stafford, go of Stafford. is number twenty-two get? in the rankings. Hold on. All right. He's number twenty-two in the rankings. You're you know who he, he has a QBR of? Is that Maria? a five? A fifty-five point eight. You know who's over him? Hasselback, Jay Cutler. Teddy Bridgewater, Marcus Mariota, Tyrod Taylor, and Ryan Fitzpatrick. Those guys have a better QBR than Matt Stafford. This is his seventh year in the NFL. He also has his 25. seventh year has, in the NFL. Shut up. He has 25,000 yards, the fastest quarterback to that. I you can't let him go. You can't. There's nothing you can do. He's better than Dan Marino sick. as of I right agree. now. I, Dan Marino is the only thing that he did well, you in between pump this the time that Stafford 2012 has. when they went 4-12, and 12, he had a lot of empty yards that didn't mean shit. So what? Uh, Dan Marino went down as so the best. So what? <laughs> that is a Detroit Lion mindset. So what? Is it? Matt Stafford sucks dick. You so can't, what? You can't let Stafford go. He's not the problem. Obviously, his line. You've said that already. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then that means Who are you going to get to replace Stafford? I don't Stafford? know! Even, <laughs> even the salary cap. You let you let Calvin go. If he can only produce one catch this game, then you got to let him go. Because if you're not going to use him, they should have traded him, a- him before the deadline. Now he loses value. Matter. No one wants to touch him. They will touch him. He'll still be a first round, the even a second round him. pick. God, he makes a good point, Vinny. He doesn't make any good points, John. Listen, he he makes a great point in that Stafford hasn't won any playoff games. That's the big measuring stick. I agree. The the whole He's yardage. Been to two. Yeah, he, the whole the whole oh, yardage wow. thing doesn't matter. I'm sorry, but. Right now, you have to roll with him. What I would say to do is draft a quarterback, let him learn one or two years under Stafford, and see if he's a player, and he can push him. But you're, 
you're losing with you're losing with them, and that's an argument to get rid of them. But at the same time, I think that what they failed to do is draft a quarterback that can legitimately replace them. So find someone. I would say if they're going to get the fifth pick, draft Connor Cook and let him sit behind Matthew Stafford for a year or two and see if he can learn oh, something. Man, I want I Connor think... Cook too until I seen him play against Iowa. I mean that guy. Or I don't care how hurt he was. Or if you're against Connor Cook. Draft someone in the sixth, seventh round that can potentially help oh you. My God. Tom Brady That's was in the sixth drafted round. Dan Orlowski. Oh my God. They got to find someone. But I agree with what you're saying. I think that you can roll with Stafford. But the problem is, though, his contract's up and they're going to want to give him big money. I don't, I'm going to feel miserable when that announcement comes on the ticker that says Stafford signed for 10 years, 125 million, 65 guaranteed. I'm going to be like, when you, when you, right then and there, number one pick, you shouldn't feel that way. You should feel like, okay, Aaron Rodgers, no problem. Write a, write a blank check. Uh, Tom Brady, whatever you want, write a blank check. With, with Matthew Stafford, either way, if, you, if, you, if he was gone, I wouldn't care. But I do feel like what's going to happen is he's going to be here for the next couple years. Oh, my God, you're right. The thing is, is you, got, you have to keep Stafford. You can't, they, they drafted Stafford to put people around him. Now you look at people like Russell Wilson. All they're though, doing is putting people around Russell Stafford, doing, and he's still not getting the job done, regardless of how bad that offensive line is. Okay, Not regardless. Offensive line Pretend the everything. mic's not in your face and talk. <laughs> Listen to me. They have given this guy more weapons. Than, look at Tom Brady right now. Look at what he's doing. He doesn't have shit but Rob Gronkowski. Uh, he has nothing. He could literally throw the ball up in the air, run it, and catch it himself and, and score a touchdown. <laughs> uh, and Stafford has, he has compared, more than enough weapons. Okay, so when, now when you talk about guys like that, the question is real simple. Tom Brady is on the lines with this line. Is he a winning quarterback? No, on this team? they wouldn't be four. Hell nine. no, they wouldn't be four or nine. What they would wouldn't they be four or nine. What would they be? They'd have seven wins. Okay. What, what, what is that? Uh, they would be uh, seven and six. Seven and six. I'll take it. Okay, I'll, I'll take it. That's a valid argument. What do you might, think? They might be eight and five. If Tom, no. if Tom Brady's Speaking of eight and team, five, the Jets are eight and five. Oh my god! Hold on. Uh, if, if if Tom Brady's on the Lions, what do you think? Oh my god! Four he has, nine. He has Calvin Johnson. He'll probably ah! be seven and six. I'd agree with that. And another thing, Matt Stafford has to start paying attention to the defensive line when it's coming at him. He, he can't. He has no idea. He, has, he doesn't even pay attention. Like, you're a professional athlete, dude. Look at these guys that are coming at you and pressuring you. He just takes the hit. He couldn't read a Dr. Seuss book. He couldn't <laughs> read a Dr. Seuss book. You got book. that? <laughs> <laughs> this is bad. It's pretty atrocious, and I apologize. My goodness gracious. So where do we go from here? We've got three games left. You're going to be tuned in at all. Uh, Monday night, look at that. After that atrocious loss to St. Louis, we got a national game versus the We got the, one the more left. The on Monday night football. That's Next a Monday, Monday night game? Monday night game. Well, John Gruden will make it interesting. I mean, speaking of interesting, Dan Miller can take a funeral and make it exciting on 97-1. I mean, this Miller. team is so bad. He really brings it. Oh, up. no! Thank you, Daniel. I mean, the guy is marvelous at He's what he does. He's the best at what he does. He, he literally it. is. One of the few bright spots in the organization, the radio team for sure. I like. Well, what are they going to do when it goes to WJR next year? He'll be there. He'll He's be the guy. Go to WJR. He'll be there. I'll... <laughs> <laughs> you got to tune in the next. You gonna, you gonna watch Monday night game? I don't have a choice. It's you Monday have to. night. <laughs> Guess what I'm doing when I leave here? I'm gonna go drink a ton of beer and watch the Dolphins play the Giants. And listen, the Eagles are playing the Cardinals next week. I'm really devastated because even at six and seven, they can make it to the playoffs, and but they got to play the Cardinals. And the Redskins and the Giants got an easy schedule. Uh, you know what? I don't know because I kind of <laughs> listen. If the Eagles don't make it to the playoffs, Chip Kelly's ass is fired. Mm. So I kind of want him to lose, but He's I want to see him in the playoffs at the same time. <laughs> but that's the thing. They're not going to fire Kelly's Chip in his Kelly. Third year. He went ten and six and ten and six. They're and not going to fire him. Eight and eight this year and don't go to the playoffs. His ass is fired. Oh my god! Jim Cole, uh, They're uh, not going to uh, fire. The Lions him. go ten and six in two thousand eleven. Okay, and then they were four and four in in twenty twelve. They lost eight games straight, went four and twelve, and they kept Jim how does Schwartz. That e- how does and then that they even- fired him the year after when they went seven and nine. How does that How even make sense for? to fire Chip Kelly if they had him in control of personnel, <gasps> trading people because away? Because they aren't content with losing like you guys okay, are. Okay, we'll they see. They don't know what that means. <laughs> you want to bet on you that? You don't know what winning means. You want to bet that? Yeah, I do want to bet it. You've if never they lose won. to Arizona, Chip Kelly's ass is fired because they're going to go eight and eight playing this shit. The hell are you guys talking about? What are you looking at? I'm I'm just I'm shocked that you're a Lions fan and an Eagles fan. I feel so bad for you. Doesn't on my whole life. I feel bad. Cleveland's next. Oh my god, (laughs) Johnny Manziel. All right. (laughs) So uh, listen, the Lions are in bad shape, and they got a clean house, and they got to bring a guy in with a resume that is stacked and filled to the brim with winning. 
a playoff wins. And I want him to be passionate. I want him to know what it takes to win playoff games. I want him on during press conferences to get pissed off. I want Josh McDaniels. You do? Yeah. There's a dumpster fire in Denver. The only so thing what? Can, everybody flourishes under Belichick, Jim Rod. <laughs> they- My farts would smell better if I, I was in care. Foxborough right now, fart next to Belichick. Ugh. Had enough. How many minutes? He have drafted you been on Tebow. Board? My goodness gracious. That was his first Josh mistake. McDaniels. That was his <laughs> Who does That's that? the only thing. I'd take I McDaniels. Mean, I, don't, I don't know what this Three is. more games left of this wretched season. They what win against do? San Francisco, and they finish 5-11. and 11. They lose to the Bears, and they lose to the Saints. Five. I would say they're going to beat the Saints, but to the Lions, I'm not even going to go down that road. They just lost to Case Keenum. Mm-hmm. Case Keenum threw for 124 yards and an interception, and you lost. You lost to Todd. You went to the playoffs last year and went 11-5. and five. Week and you week. just lost to Case Keenum. Week to week. <laughs> it's hard to know. If they could win all three, they could lose all three. Yeah, it's tough to tell. It's a mess. That's My just the way it is. God. We, 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 stick, we stick with them. We try to watch them week in and week out. It's super tough, but uh, what are you going to do? It's a, it's a train wreck, and it's, it's thankfully going to be over very soon. Can't wait for it to be over. Uh, I can't <laughs> either. Can't I wait. Put for all the my draft. effort into the Pistons and the, the Tigers. My goodness gracious! I, I've just I've had enough. <laughs> What's funny is when they were zero and five, I was already looking at mock drafts. Really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, they won those three games in a row, and everybody was like, "Oh, look what's going on! Oh my God!" They won in Lambo. They won. All right, they won so in Lambo in the worst season possible. All right, it let's let's move nothing. on from it, that. Let's talk about head coaching camp. Yeah. Well, listen, I don't know who I would take. They're Listen, talking about gays. Adam Gase? Mm-hmm. Where'd you hear that at? I heard it on uh, the Bleacher Report. Uh, that's just hearsay. I want the Ravens to so, fire yeah, John No Harbaugh. kidding. It's rumor. I want Harbaugh here. You want Harbaugh? He was crazy. John Harbaugh? Yeah. The They're Ravens not going to fire not. John Harbaugh? I don't think so either, but that's what I want. They lost their quarterback. They're not going to fire him. I'm going to be? Who do you think is going to be, John? Have you heard any they might. They might hire Ken Wisenhunt. No. Already not already as GM. They turned him down two years ago. Head coach. What? He turned him down two years ago, and they hired Caldwell instead. They didn't Dude, turn him up. down. He went to Tennessee. I said he turned them down and went to Tennessee. Ah. And they fired his ass four weeks ago. I know. Well, that's how good Ken Wisenhunt is. So? Well, the one thing you guys can definitely, uh, you know, we're just speculating. The one thing you could say is it's unpredictable. They could keep Shel- they, they could go as far as keeping Sheldon White to bringing in some nobody to bringing in an experienced guy. It's the Lions, man. That's the toughest thing to do is predict what they're going to do. You know, the right thing to do is to go out and get an executive from Green Bay or New England. But it's the Lions. They'll be like, you know what? Let's keep Sheldon White. He did good enough. He got oh, a, a win. He did good enough. <laughs> he did good. He got us. They two won wins. in Lambo. Good for when him. They should have lost. They went three and twelve. Hire him. Just promote him. You know. You know. Be pimp. If Martha Ford just said, you know what, I'm going to be the GM. Oh, <laughs> Ugh. That's I'd what rather we have a gang of butt naked guys. Like we did a door. national search. We paid a guy to go out and get someone and. Martha Ford. <laughs> I'd, I'd rather see you in a nope. banana hammock, John. Yeah, they're going to go get, talk like that. <laughs> they're going to get someone. They're going to get someone that's going to clean house. I, I'm going to keep hope alive. Put that out there. Clean house. Go get a brand new GM. Yeah, and and let's no, start no, over. I talk about it. People are like, Even, what about Terrell Austin? He did such a good job. I mean, you passed the defense. No, he's, he's such gone. a good well, Get the hell out of here. Get him out of here. think they should let him all They're go? bringing in a then, new GM, Cook. Either going to boom everything. They're cleaning house. It is a shit factory in Detroit right now. That's right. Let's come on. Let's get to the commercial, buddy. All right, shut up and do your thing. Let's go. Motor City Sports Ryan, Detroit Sports Podcast. Doc here for FanaticU.com, Detroit Sports official outfitter and the official outfitter of the Detroit Sports Podcast Network. For the month of December, Vinny, if you go to FanaticU.com and you use the promo code DSP when you check out, I know you like to buy a bunch of things for your significant other. Go buy at FanaticU.com. Use that promo code DSP for Detroit Sports Podcast. Promo code DSP. Enter it. You'll save 15% off your entire order, even on clearance items. So if anything's on sale, you'll save an additional 15%. And for this month alone, anyone at all that uses that promo code on any purchase, you'll be entered to win a $100 gift card. We'll pick the drawing probably on January 1st or 2nd, and uh, a random person will win a $100 gift card to Fanatic U. So save money, be entered to win a $100 gift card, go to FanaticU.com, use the promo code DSP, Detroit Sports, official outfitter, great selection, all Detroit teams. FanaticU.com, promo code DSP. And now back to the Motor City Sports Rant on the Detroit Sports Podcast Network. Ah, 
Look at you bringing in the rock music. I like it. Motor City Sports Rant and Choice Sports. Shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. Listen. Down. What's on tap, Vinny? What, what the hell are you guys gonna rap about? Uh, listen. The Detroit Pistons. They're fourteen and eleven. They're eighth in the East. They're playing the Clippers tonight. They look really good, even though they're ten and eleven in the last twenty-one games. That they're starting four and zero. I was uh, seeing a lot of trade rumors swirling around on my phone when I was driving in here. Oh, what's 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 the talk? Well, they're talking about trading Brandon Jennings to the New York Knicks. Oh, for a gentleman named Jerry and shoot me in the testicles, nice. Grant. <laughs> He's averaging five point five points per game, and uh, why the hell would you trade Brandon Jennings for a guy that averages five and a half points per game when Brandon Jennings will make one hell of a six man when he comes off the bench when his Achilles heals? When is that going to happen? I don't know. But what do you think about them trading Brandon Jennings, a potential phenomenal fit for this offense, and a, a tremendous sixth man for a guy that averages five and a half points per game? Too? Yeah, I, I think they're rumors, and I think the, the, a lot of the talk is going to be about moving Brandon Jennings when he comes back. But I think for the Pistons, it would behoove them to put him out there on the court, mm. see if he's back, and if he's a guy that can come anywhere near what he was last year or the guy that you know was leading the Pistons last season, then you could get more for him. So I think it's too early to speculate on on him before we see him play. I believe that he'll get on the court. He's going to be a guy that's going to come off the bench and help them with secondary scoring. You notice that you know when they lose games that they struggle with you know consistency on the bench. So that's a guy that can run the second unit because you know they've given Spencer Dinwiddie a uh, significant amount of chances. They've you know kind of sent him to the developmental league to try to get better. But a guy like a guy like Brandon Jennings could be an asset here. I'm I know I'm not of the opinion just yet that you should trade him at all. He could be a solid backup. Uh, Reggie Jackson is hit or miss. This is a guy that goes off for 25 points and and puts up good assists. Then in, in other games, sometimes in back to back, he will disappear. And so I, I'm not comfortable with uh, pinning my future on Reggie Jackson just yet because he's too hot and cold. He's been more consistent as of late. He's having an all star year. What are you talking? He's about? having a good year, but when he goes off. You know, the Pistons are only 14-11 and 11 as we record That's this. That's where Brandon Jennings comes in at. That's exactly right. So I don't think they should trade him, in my opinion. And Spencer did what he has taken a massive step back as opposed to last year. He was putting up some good numbers last year. What the hell happened to him? You know, sometimes in the NBA, your game has to constantly evolve. And if you can't create your own shot, and when you do get your own shot, it, it stops falling, then you deal with confidence issues. And uh, Spencer Dinwiddie is a guy that has a lot of talent, can definitely, definitely be a serviceable guy on this team. But, yeah, you said it. When you're not making your shots... And you're not a contributor to the team. You're going to get sent to the D League to, to uh, you know, as they would say, improve your craft. Right. Well, I like the Pistons. They're they're winning and they're in the position to send a guy like Spencer Dinwiddie down because two years ago they couldn't do it. You think the Pistons are a playoff team from what you've seen so far in the first? I would like games, to uh, listen. They're fourteen and eleven. They're playing good. Well, they've they, gone ten they, and eleven in the last twenty one games, so they're a five hundred basketball team. Mm-hmm. And last year, I would have given it the thumbs up. Because I thought that they were going to go 39 to 43 this year. Mm-hmm. But uh, the East is looking really good this year, and it's scaring the living hell out of me. Everybody, uh, 1 to 8 is above 500, and it's scaring me. Yeah, the East. The East only the joke. top five last year were above 500. The bottom mm-hmm. three were under 500, and they still made the playoffs. Mm-hmm. So but, this was last year, I believe, yeah, we're going to the playoffs, but now I don't know. But did you get a chance to catch the Indiana game? They were lights out, dude. They were shooting from threes, they were, you know, moving the basketball. It was great. It was on the bar, I think, on Saturday night. I've seen, UFC. I've yeah. seen glimpses of it, but I did. What? Yeah, UFC. It, oh, my UFC. gosh. <laughs> it was great Saturday night. I was driving yeah. to the podcast, like, let's talk about McGregor and Jose Alderon. I'm like, what? No. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. What's Jose his name? Aldo. That was Jose great. Aldo. It was 13 seconds. It did was. you pay for it? That's no. Good. Did no. you pay for it? No. No I one's paying for it, so it's not a sport. I don't see no, you about. go to be. <laughs> Dude, McGregor swung on him one time and he fell on the ground. Oh, wow. Let's talk about that on the Motor Sports Rant. The you hell does that have to do with Detroit sports? You got to listen, listen to your friend. Here, I ain't man. listening to nothing. We should talk about him a little bit later. But in terms of the Pistons, we yeah, in terms, we we'll definitely talk about the UFC for sure. I'm a big fan. I'm a diehard UFC guy. But for the Pistons, no, you're not. I'm a diehard. Sit here lying to the fans. I'm a diehard. <laughs> Alistair Overeem back in the past. I'm a I'm a big time fan for My sure. Goodness gracious! All well, the Pistons did beat the Pacers. They whooped them. They, they whooped them bad. They whooped them bad because they they played great. Was they, that on uh, Sunday night it was last Saturday. night? It was Saturday. 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 My God, they stuck their test. It was late Saturday, wasn't it? Uh, it was no. I think it was at, it was at the Palace, and I believe it was a seven seven thirty game. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I was at the Cloverleaf watching it. 
Yeah, they smoked the Pacers. They looked really good. No, oh, now you remember. I do remember. My mind's so rattled, I had to think about it. Rattled. I was just watching glimpses of it, like I said. I, I was at Cloverleaf he, eating pizza. He was watching dude, McGregor. Cloverleaf is the <laughs> truth, dude. You've never been there? I was shocked you said No, I'm not from the east next... side. Okay. It, oh, it... my God. I almost rolled around butt naked in this deep dish pizza that I got. <laughs> this oh, is my deep. goodness. It was, so, it, was, it was a supreme pizza. It was ah. Yeah, the, the Cloverleaf is a great place. Yeah, take your boy. It's a good place. East Point. I grew up there, so are you East Point? Yeah, it was great, dude. This pizza is better than Mama Mia's. Nah, I don't know about that, but it's pretty damn good. Yeah, it's good stuff. You rolled out Saturday night. You didn't. They didn't Wait, have who? the UFC. Aaron and her friends. We went to the uh, the Henry Ford Museum to watch to look at the Christmas lights. It was so nauseating. I, I'd rather have uh, with the GGs with a banana hammock and a wife beater on. Okay. Ah, uh, the GGs. It was so <laughs> grueling. All it was was white Christmas lights. Mm-hmm. And there was a bunch of little bastards running around unplugging all the lights and the trees and stuff. That was the only bright spot I seen. No pun intended. Dude. Are you uh, real quick before we talk about the Pistons again? Are you friends with his boy Ward? Mm-hmm. You guys all hang out or no? Uh, How do you know? Uh, Ward? No, I'm gonna tell you. But I, I might tease something for later or uh, no, after. Really do it now. The, How can you tease after, somebody? We could just fast. No, forward. no, 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 no. After the podcast. Because uh, I don't know, it might not, might not be too flattering. So no, I, I'll do it. I'll I met like, him. Oh, if it has anything to do with him, it's true. Oh, is it? Okay. Oh, absolutely. I've met him, but I'm yeah. What do you do? I'm not his friend. Was he heckling Aaron Andrews? <laughs> no, no, no. It was just uh, regarding his Facebook stuff and what he talks about you about on his Facebook. Yeah, talks did about you like you. that? I said, don't you ever post anything about me on Facebook about me ever again. Delete it. I'm t- I'm tired of it. I, I was five I was, years old. That's I was your yeah, friend. <laughs> I, was, I was a little bit. I was uh, he's 37 years old posting nonsense. Oh no! Thank so, okay, you, Daniel. Uh, okay, so now for those who have who <laughs> haven't listened, what did your boy do? Because that was a little bit of a faux pas. What, what did he do? What did he do that upset you? He was posting things about my life on his social media that no one play, cares about. Giving play-by-play yeah. play of what you're doing at the bar. I didn't even do anything. I was having a beverage, and I got verbally assaulted by her and her friend. And <laughs> <laughs> verbally assaulted. It was unbelievable. Like, leave me alone. I should have put a comment. Well, like, you got to accept it now. You're friends with him on Facebook? Yeah. I'm friends with everybody. Facebook. Yeah, you guys got to grow listen, up. Listen, man, I'm popular. Do you know that? The doc has, has social media. That's I can literally. That's what you're in. You're in radio. I you can have fart have in my hand and release it under my status and get twenty thousand. Although I did delete mine. I had to deactivate it. It's so depressing. This, well, this keep your personal shut up. Off it. Wait, no. So, so was it cool? I'll reach across this table. I'll <laughs> swat that, you on my three. So was it cool with you, with <laughs> you telling him, "Hey, man, chill out with that"? Or was he like, "Oh, sorry"? I said, "Dude, delete that." What are you doing? Like, oh, sorry, uh, dude. You're uh, Thirty-seven <laughs> years old, posting things like a t- like a eighteen-year-old. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're really weird. John, I told you on and <laughs> off the podcast, do not play that drop. It's not funny, and, and no one enjoys it. I enjoy it, so that's all that matters. You get off on bothering me. Yes. Well, yeah. <laughs> Add. Doesn't You're everybody. a tick. What were we talking about? <laughs> Jarvie, where have you been, man? Okay, so, okay, good. I'm glad you told him, because I looked at it. I looked at it. Did he delete like, it? I didn't check if he deleted well, I it. The guy's a child. It didn't, it didn't matter. I screenshotted it. I was going to tweet it for you, but I'm like, oh, I can't do that to did Vinny. You, did you <laughs> screenshot that guy's... Send me it. I don't no, even know what no. it said verbatim. Uh, I'll tell that you. That guy's got We're done. no room to talk about anything. Like his life is deteriorating right before our eyes, and he's sitting here critiquing every move I make. I wouldn't talk shit about him, but I'm not going to talk about him. I could talk shit about him all I want, but I'm not going to. The okay. guy wears a ring on his head, and the Lions don't have any championships. <laughs> They'll never. <laughs> uh. I'm like, why are you wearing a ring on your nose? It's a Barry Sanders Hall of Fame ring. I'm like, here it is. Is it? Is that what it is? I mean, no. Or is he hoping that, for a And he's Super got Bowl. one from 1957. I'm like, my dad was four years old when that ring was made for your fingers, and you have it on your head. Dad. Okay, so I'm glad you listen. I'm dad. glad you gave your boy the warning that you're supposed to do, and it won't Dude, happen I again. Would, it not happen I'm again. I'm like, seriously, get a life. Don't post about my life on the internet because my family's friends with them on Facebook, and he kind of like is my family too. That's what's really like deceiving about that. Why would you do that to somebody? Hmm. Well, he could, well, based friend. on what he wrote, which I'm not going to say, he was concerned. That's Concer- all. That's what that's what my friend Schnick Newton said. He's, like, oh, he's just concerned about you, man. I'm like, don't. I said, I said, send me what he send me what he posted. He goes, I can't do that. You're going to have to ask him. I'm like, they don't text me. This <laughs> child. Oh, so you knew right away people were texting you like, hey, there's something going down. Yeah, man. Media. And everyone's worried yeah. about what I'm doing in life because I deacted my Facebook. It's just temporary. Calm down, guys. I mean, if you want to pay me, I can get, like tell you what the with the post for a status. I mean, for crying out loud, you guys got to get a life. Well, see, when you Everyone's go to... freaking out because I deactivated yeah. my... It's been over two weeks. Like, oh, do you... Because when you go to a piston game, <laughs> how are we going to know? You're not going to check in anywhere. You're not going to have any... I got Twitter, but I hate Twitter, dude. It's so stupid. Like, get a life. Like, I care about what Chad Charles and... Roger doing over in Auburn Hills. Like, I give me a, a break. Your Facebook. Page. Are you banging a model? I mean, is she naked on your Twitter? And then don't post. Your I Facebook don't care. page is very funny. I think you should Why keep do it. You bring pay it back. attention to that. 
I had to deactivate it because my counselor, Specs Howard, said, you're not going to be able to get a job. Look at these stats. Look at these memes. I'd be, it's oh, a job. Oh. So I had to deactivate it. What? And guess what I you still don't have? You put some ridiculous stuff on there. Oh, no. You showed that to a counselor, a professional? No, she's my friend on there, Kristen. She's seen it. She's like, hey, it's not exactly what you post. It's no. the responses you get. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. I would tell Daniel you. Daniel is living. It's supposed to be private. You're not supposed to let professional people see that. Right. I don't have a choice. Oh, no. Vanessa, get your know. personal life off okay. the media. What do you, want, what do you think I want to do on the radio when I get a radio job? Everybody's going to know everything I do. And that's so why I got in the radio because I live a fascinating life and I want people to experience it. Oh. He's not that fascinating. See, she, <sighs> kind of not. I'm glad, you, I'm glad you got that professional oh, advice. Back I agree. Spencer 100%. Dinwiddie. <laughs> 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 You think you think um what? Do what do I think? I asked you, do you think the Pistons are a playoff team? I just told you. No. I agree. No, I don't. I disagree I with you. They were. Stan Van Gundy. I disagree with you 100%. I think they're a good team. They're going to get they better a team. and they're going to make the playoffs. They haven't this year. really played Six anybody. To seven we'll, we'll see tonight when they play the Clippers. Okay. I'll text you if they beat the Clippers tonight they at beat the, the Pacers. Pacers. I don't care. My fart can beat the Pacers. Really? Beat the Clippers and the you'll be a little bit. 2011 Pistons. They beat, beat them by the 22. Beat the Clippers and you think they'll be better, that uh, you'll be more convinced? Oh, I'll be sold. Okay. Even if it's at home. Uh, the, the Chris Paul, uh, Blake Griffin, the list goes on and on. Yeah, I just don't want to. Uh, you know, back in the day, you, you guys saw Blake Griffin posterize us, DeAndre Jordan. Oh, remember when he, us, oh, we were yeah, at that game? Yeah. They still got DeAndre Jordan? I wasn't at the game when they dunked on Brandon Knight. Is that what you're talking about there? You were at that game? Weren't we at that no, game? No, I wasn't. Oh, that you was might the year have been. before. Against the Clippers? Was, yeah. You went against the Clippers. I was, I was with a, you in that one. You were with your egg. No, no, that was I against wasn't. the Milwaukee Bucks. <laughs> Shit for brains? No. <laughs> no, that was against the Atlanta Hawks. My bad. No, it was Blake Yeah, Griffin we had Chris there. Middleton. He was the leading scorer, I remember. Who are you talking to? I'm He's talking to you. He's Milwaukee. Do you see Chris Oh, Middleton? my God. His brain is fried. Chris I was at We the went game. against the Milwaukee Bucks. I have pictures in my phone. <laughs> yeah, I think I think the, the massive dunk that got posterized was in L.A. Hmm. I believe because I'm almost certain he was. Okay, in, then we weren't at that game. Yeah, I think it was in L.A. Are but, we doing a podcast next week? Yeah, we went to one of the 21 and take one take a break off on the 28th. That's what I'm thinking. But I don't we'll really see. care. I'd still like to do a podcast. i got to get some sponsors, huh? You should get some. I'll help you out. Don't worry. Don't worry about that. I'll anyway. get two tonight. <laughs> All right. So the Pistons are a playoff team. I disagree with you. They're going to make the playoffs. They're a good I watch. I hope they do. I'm just saying it doesn't look like they really are. Uh, <laughs> before you go to commercial, uh, Bruce Rendon was involved in a huge fight, and the Tigers are not looking for a left fielder mm-hmm. via sources. I'm live. Mm-hmm. What do you think about the Tigers not addressing the big hole? In the left and the right, and even the center field. Well, you knew uh, Alavilo has been straightforward. He said that our biggest need is pitching, and he went out and, and spent a boatload of cash on some pitchers. So, who else are they going to get that's going to be worth anything? They're going to go within. They're going to want Tyler Collins to be the guy. He's a right fielder. I'm talking about mm. left field. I'm, hold on. Oh, I, actually, all the way around. You know, you got uh, what you call it? JD Martinez. You got uh, Anthony Ghost, and you got Cameron oh, Mabin. Soul. And Tyler Collins. Cameron Mabin. Anthony Ghost. He couldn't throw a fit. You know, so they, they might go with someone from the minors. He couldn't throw a dollar bill in a titty bar. Who knows? He they couldn't might, catch. They might make a trade for him. He couldn't one. catch herpes in a whorehouse. Exactly. It's, it's not too late. It's not too late. They still might address Trade Verlander. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good answer. I can't. I can't stand it. He had some good numbers. Like, trade him now. What are you doing? No one will I touch know. him. What were we talking about? Oh, for shit's sake. Rondone's hilarious, dude. He's still fat, dude. He's fat as Hey, hell. what happened with that fight? I didn't read the uh, the article. Oh, man. I just he, heard. He I just, you know, he, he's out there, and, you know, he's these guys got bravado down there in that league. Hey, and... wait a minute. Didn't we cut him? No. We sent him home because he was lazy. That's and it, right. And now he's fighting. Now he's fighting. It's just one of those things where he's immature, and it happens in baseball. He's but Titus Young 2.0. This guy should be on his best behavior, and he's not doing what he's got to do to get back up here. He's, you know... Someone that we're counting on, but I don't know. I don't see it. I think this is a guy that could be a malcontent. He could be a troublemaker. Right. Cook, if you're not going to talk, I mean, you might as well do something with those fingernails. I mean, they're <laughs> so brutal. Get wow. off. You're a dick. Absolutely. <laughs> you got to be nice to your boy. That's yeah. how you, you, you invite your boy in, and that's how you treat him? That's not yeah. cool. No, I'm just kidding around. You're a dick. <laughs> he doesn't phase me at all. Uh, that's good. Listen to this kid. <sighs> Wait, so I got a question. So you've been friends with him for so long, and you're still his friend? What's wrong with you? Yeah, I know. <laughs> no one knows. <laughs> so the Tigers aren't going to... Ah. So Gordon turned us down, and they're not going to go after Cespedes. Yeah. So you go trot out what you have. And it's, it's not that, that bad. the bullpen is stellar, and it's then you're above bad. 500 at the All-Star break, and then you acquire an outfielder. The improvements haven't been that bad. You have a, a semblance of a team that can win. Okay, so Mike Pelfrey, he's the number five guy. His ERA was 4.26. It's atrocious. He went like 10 and 13. And even if he's not the fifth starter and Daniel, uh, Daniel Norris is the fifth starter, 
You're paying eight million dollars a year for a reliever. But you, but what what Al Avila sees is that Nothing? Comerica Park is a pitcher's ballpark. So you don't pay a reliever eight million dollars a year. That's the going rate. That's what you got to do. You really, gotta pay, you got to pay it. You Would know, you? Look, uh, I wish I could throw. Uh, this, num- these numbers are going to blow your mind. Thirteen and ten was what Jordan Zimmerman was last year. That got you twenty two million dollars. Thirteen and ten because he's Ugh. pitched every year for the last four oh, years. Yeah, maybe Pelfrey wasn't ten and thirteen. I got his record mixed up with Jordan Zimmerman's and it was backwards. Would you guys trade for Chapman? He's gone. He, Where'd he go? The Dodgers? Uh, I believe he's he, no he, I Cubs. Think they can- I think they canceled that trade. What? Didn't they? they canceled it because he had domestic violence <laughs> charge. Dude, did you see the Cubs got Ben Zobrist mm-hmm. and uh, who else did they get? The Cubs, are, the Cubs are nice. Alex, Gor- they're all, Alex Gordon's they're a left fielder. They're an AL he's a team free agent. in a National League ballpark. Mm-hmm. What? He's Alex not coming. Gordon's a f- uh, he's, free he, agent. He'll he's get not more coming money. here. They already turned him down. He's, he's going to want more money. He'll, he'll command more money. He'll, he'll get it. the Red Sox, do nothing. Yeah, he'll get it. I haven't been following a lot out. of the offseason. You haven't? No, Me not, not for them. Don't feel too bad. They've, 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 they've bolstered their bullpen and their starting pitching. Now they got to get that left fielder to make everybody happy. But so play. far, so good. So far, so good. Every move has been relatively okay. Right. My, uh, Pelfrey, okay, fine. You got the pitcher from uh, the Yankees, the reliever. You got low. You got someone that can be in the bullpen. So they've they've upgraded in key spots. Like I said, give the man a break. Give Alfila a break. He'll he'll fix it. Don't worry. Yeah. He hasn't and done another thing. Not, I'm sorry. What'd you say? So he hasn't done anything yet to make you go. Oh, he's terrible. He's making moves. He got uh, uh, these. I would say third best free agent pitcher out there. Right. So Jordan Zimmerman, he brought someone here, and he's picked, he's upgraded the, the starters in the bullpen. So mm. he's he's done a terrible job. So who's our pitching coach, Jeff Jones? No, they got, no he left. No, they fired him? They fired him. They I got, was going to say, they might as well fire the pitching coach if they're not going to fire Brad Austin. Because remember the, the article that I wrote? That I wrote. Jeff Jones I read, retired. I oh, think, he did? I think. Yeah. Well, they got to bring a guy in. That they did, they got a they guy bring like, back in Rick Knapp? <laughs> They got the guy from uh, Philadelphia, the Phillies. Oh, my God. You know, you love him, right? It's <laughs> over. They might as well just cancel the season. No, I'm serious. But I'm glad Jeff Jones retired because if you're not going to uh, – Brad Ausmus isn't going to get fired. The pitching coach – because remember the, the, the article that I read last year about Ian Kroll being lazy. Okay. You know, he doesn't want to work out. So Ian Kroll's lazy. Bruce Rondone's lazy. Yep. That's an, indi- that's an indictment on the pitching staff. And they got rid of him. And Jeff well, Jones, he retired. Quote, unquote, retired. They got, they got new staff. So well, maybe he Do you guys really think Dombrowski was the problem? Is Gene Lamont coming back? What? Do you guys really think Dombrowski was the problem? No, not at all. I didn't think he was. I thought they it was never a addressed the ball Boston ball ever. It's one of those things where when you're, when you're at a place for 10 years and you don't win the big prize, it's time to move on. It's but absolutely. you've been contending, though. You were there. But it, they weren't a, there this year. It's a big boy no. business. You can't right. be at, you, in sports. If you're a general manager, or president, and you're at a place for ten years and you don't got a ring, you should be looking for another job. You're not going to be keeping your job. Okay. I mean, if you got to the World Series six times and lost them all, well, I don't think Avila is or Avila or whatever he wants to pronounce it. Mm-hmm. I don't think he's the answer. Hmm. Well, who Avila? So, well, you give him. It's you, a valid opinion, you, but you got you, all that money to work with. I could be the next GM. Yeah, it's a valid opinion, but you still got to wait and see. It's his he first doesn't make team. splashes like. Like Dombrowski does, doesn't or he has, the he hasn't had never the time. Done anything. You could shit in the toilet and have a big splash. At the end of the day, it's still a piece of shit. <laughs> Thank you, Motor City Sports Rant, DetroitSportsPodcast dot com. Thank you, everyone, for supporting us. If you like what you're listening to, go visit our website, DetroitSportsPodcast dot com. That's Detroit Sports with an S Podcast dot com. It's where you go to download all these great podcasts. We're rolling out six to seven weekly podcasts, and always looking to add more. And so thanks to your support. Thank you for those who have been clicking through the Amazon banner, showing your continued support for guys like Vinny. He can bring on his friends. He's a good guy. And uh, we're doing great things here at this podcast network. We want to do great things in 2016. We can't continue to do it without your support. So go visit us, DetroitSportsPodcast.com, the hub for our operation. We want to thank all those who have supported us, the sponsors, the Detroit Sports Nation website, everyone out there that's been supporting this project. We can't continue to do it, and we greatly appreciate it. And now back to the Motor City Sports Rant on the Detroit Sports Podcast Network. Hit me up, Vinny. <laughs> Welcome to Detroit Sports. I like it, Vinny. Uh, uh, welcome to Detroit Sports. We're going to talk to I think, Brandon Knight. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I think you might be in the wrong thing. Hit me up with a... We got the next 
top five Christmas songs next on. Uh, it's beginning to look a lot like assholes. <laughs> diddle, 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 <laughs> farting in my head. Finny Stubbs in the Christmas Finny Stubbs in the Christmas Connection. Oh, w- Christmas P- Connection. WPOD Network. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to pod me back up here. W-F-A-R-T. All right. All right, what's on tap next? (laughs) It's time for the week 15 Pigs Out. How do we do it? Game number one. Doesn't matter because your boy's never here. Yeah. Ryan Fitzpatrick and the New York Jets travel to Jerry uh, Jerry Jones. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> What's on your mind, Vinny? Ryan Fitzpatrick <laughs> right. travels to Dallas to take on Tony Romo and the Dallas Cowboys. Jets favored by three over under at 40, dude. Dallas. Dallas. Yep. Give me the Jets in the over. Ooh. <laughs> Give me Dallas, dude. I know they're 2 and 11, right? Yeah, it doesn't really matter. No. Jets are 8 and 5. Ah, who cares? Give me Dallas and give me the <laughs> over. I'll Game take the number under. two. What? I took the under. Under? I got the over. What do you got? I got under. the Jets and the over. Ah. Uh... Game number two. Aaron Rodgers travels to the black hole to take on Derek Carr and Amari Cooper <laughs> and the Oakland Raiders. What's Maurice Jones drew there? I'm just kidding. What's the numbers? Dude, can you shut your mouth? Green Bay's favored by three, over under at 47. I'll take Oakland. Give me Green Bay. They're on a roll. They're on top of the division. So give me Green Bay and the over. Dude, my fart can beat Oakland right now, and I'm in Detroit. Give me Green Bay and the under. Game number three. Brock Osweiler travels to Pittsburgh to take on Ben Roethlisberger in the favored five and a half Pittsburgh Steelers with an over under at 45. Pittsburgh and the over. Pittsburgh and the over. I agree with your boy. Pittsburgh and the over. Denver to cover in the over. Game number four. Carson Palmer and the Arizona Cardinals travel to Lincoln Financial Field to take on not Nick Foles, not Mark Sanchez, but Samuel J. Jackson Bradford. <laughs> oh, dude. Cardinals are fair by three and a half with the over under at 50 and a half. 50 and a half? No, wow. 50 and three fourths. <sighs> I'd say Cardinals in the under. Agree. Cardinals in the under. They're rolling, but they're playing good. But, yeah, give me the Cardinals and the under. I want Chip Kelly fired. Give me Philadelphia to cover, but they lose, and give me the over. Game of the week. Matt Stafford travels to the Superdome to take on Drew Brees in the high-powered New Orleans Saints offense that hasn't done shit all year. But the Saints are favored by three with the over under at 15. New Orleans on the over. It's going to be a close to 100 points that day. Ooh. You know, uh, the Lions are in the neighborhood of scoring. 15 to 20 a game, and uh, I think New Orleans is going to okay. have fun. So give me the lo- give me the New Orleans Saints and the over. What'd you have? 35 to 18. What'd I say? I said I said New Orleans, right? You said New Orleans. Yeah. I have. If you and said Detroit, over. I would have pulled this cord out and twisted <laughs> it around your wiener and yanked that. Well, the thing give is me New, New Orleans yep. and the over. New yep. Orleans has no defense. At. Yep. New Orleans 35 to 18, I think. Yep. yep, and the over. Wow. That's the week 15 picks. Oh my goodness gracious! It's not hard today. Oh, it's everybody's favorite time. What? Length or girl? <laughs> what? Length or girth? This is how it works. Length is long term. Girth is short term. Okay. Clear. Oh my goodness gracious! Question number one on length or girth? Eat shit. Opposing running backs rushing for over hundred yards in the Lions. Length or girth? Oh, boy. Uh, give me length. I think that uh, New Orleans is going to have a fun game with the Lions at home. And Mark Ingram? Yep, Mark Ingram is mm. going to have some fun. So continue. Girth. Length. Girth. Why? Breeze is just going to throw all over. I said the running game. I know, but they're not going to focus on running the ball. They're so going to pass gonna the abandon ball. abandon it. Yeah. Oh, Darius oh. Slay is going to get exposed for the piece of crap he really is. Okay. I see Mark Ingram maybe not running the ball as effective, but catching a lot of balls in the backfield for screens. And I say he gets a couple touchdowns. Length. Well, maybe not because it's a screen. You said a screen. Uh, <laughs> Question number two. Jim Caldwell in the coaching staff's tenure. Length or girl. Jump. Girth. After this season's done, clean house. Done. It's girth. Wrap. I want girth, too. Give them the big broom and stick it up their assholes and twist. Twist. <laughs> 
Question number three. It is taking forever. The firm is serious, and so is Ernie Accorsi. But is Sheldon White? I don't think so, but Rod Wood might be. Question number three on Length of Earth. Search for the Lions' new general manager. Length of Earth! Ooh, the search, I think... No, the search, not the search. Yeah, the search will be lengthy. Length. They're going to take their sweet-ass time, and uh, right before the draft, well, probably January, February, two, three months from now, two, three months from now, they'll have somebody in place. Is he going to have a good resume or no? Yes. Length. 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 Why? Of course. I mean, I mean, come on. What'd you think, Vinny? Length or girth? <sighs> it's got to be length. I mean, you got to wait till the end of the season, right? Yep. Why? It's lengthy enough. Because you want guys to get fired so you can bring them in. Ah. Who's the Atlanta uh, Falcons uh, general manager? Oh, I forget his name. But They're 6-6, I... six and six, right? You think you so might if get they the lose to Tampa Bay and they go 6-7, mm. they might shit can their GM. I'd like to have him. But he hasn't done is all that much. Is it Rich McKay? Uh, he hasn't done all that much anyway, whoever it is. Is all it right. Rich McKay or not? I don't know. Let me look it up. Who cares? What, what you want him? Podcast? Uh, you're doing pretty good. You're at uh, 55 minutes. This stuff, That was a nodcast. Uh, what do you guys stuff, want to talk about? Huh? Real football? I Bring up Cam Newton. I don't know. Here's a question. The 13-0 and Carolina Panthers. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Here, check what are, it out. What are you doing, Denny? I'm about to, I'm about to do a Lions game with a terrible okay. broadcasting, like Rod Pitts. You ready? It's week 11 here at Ford Field, and the Lions are 0-10. I'm Rod Pitts. Sitting next to me is Jason the King Jarvie. And Matt Stafford is in his eighth season. Will he get this team? Will he get them to buy into the system? Well, I don't know. It's been eight years, but Matt Stafford shows glimpses of hope, and... Uh, he looks really good under center. He just can't get a win this year. Uh, it is his eighth. It is his eighth season. And well, his first two years he was hurt. And, well, I think he's going to be a Hall of Famer. Yeah, me too. All right, just cut it. I've had enough. <laughs> that, that's a Detroit Lion talking. Every time there's a bad game on, Ron Pitts is broadcasting it. <laughs> he's the commentator. Today. All right, your boy has a question. For John, us. I mean, I can't get anything out of you. I'm lost. I'm trying to figure out what the hell you're talking about. You lost me. You lost me. I'm sorry I'm not Adam fucking Corolla. Yeah, yeah, I like... (laughs) Fucking Nimrod. I like your voice questions. Adam Corolla. I want to hear it. Go ahead. Go for it. What? Adam Corolla. Should the Carolina Panthers go for the undefeated season? Yeah, of course. It's never been done before. Not in a a 16-game season. I mean, the Dolphins did it, what, 1974? Yeah, they were, I think, 14. It doesn't matter. They went 17 and 0 total. Yep, 17 and 0 total. And uh, what you call it? New England came close. They lost yep. in the Super Bowl. So they've done it in the regular oh, season. Oh, say what you were going to say. He told me in the car. Listen, listen, this is a good point. All right, the legend killers are going to beat Carolina. You've got to be more specific than that. Who are I'm going to tell you. You shut your freaking mouth. Ah, it is. The New York Giants are going to beat Carolina this week. Mm. Makes sense. In good the Meadowlands. Good well, the thing, you want, the thing you might want to watch for is, though, teams that are coming off a Monday night game tend to struggle Sunday night, short preparation. Carolina's rolling. I give you credit. That, that's a that's a solid pick. But, but they're, playing, uh, they're playing in the Meadowlands. They're playing in the Meadowlands. I didn't even think of that. But I would say Cam Newton and the power of the dab is uh, going to The power out. of what? The, the dab. dab. Dude, Jeez. Ted Ginn finally didn't drop any balls on Sunday. <laughs> so the power of the dab is going to kick in, and I still think Carolina's rolling. They're not going to lose. All right, no, so the Giants are playing the Dolphins should. tonight. Who wins? The Giants. Yeah. They, they, they the Giants in, on a roll. Are they playing in New York? Yeah. Uh, That's a dangerous no, team. No, they got to be playing in Miami because they just played the Jets at home, and then they're playing at home on Monday night. Mm. I like, against, I, uh, like I like the I like the Giants. I mean, you know, Miami's up and down. They they have I love a Dan little Campbell bit. Low. Yeah, they don't have that many offensive weapons that you you really can count on consistently. So yeah, I I take the Giants. Oh, wow, podcast <laughs> really just got flushed on the toilet. Motor City Sports Rant Detroit Sports Podcast dot com.